So, hello everyone and, and welcome to Fibon Morning Talks, our monthly webinar discussing the latest topics on angel investors' mind. My name is Tuulis Aukkonen. I'll be hosting this morning and I'm, I work at, at Fibon as communication strategist. So as each time in Fibon Morning Talks, we have a specific team. Today it is a circular economy and, and opportunities within it for an angel investor. And as usual, we have a field expert joining us. And, and today we're happy to have uh, Heli Kerminen, Director for Sustainable Investments at TESI. Heli is a sustainable investing professional experienced in innovations, solving sustainability issues and promoting resource and energy efficiency. So welcome, Heli. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Great. Uh, all right. So to begin with, maybe we could see a bit about our agenda today. So thank you. So first, um, we're going to have a little warm up, a little brain exercise. No worries, nothing too, too bad. <laughs> and, and after that, we'll continue to the actual uh, discussion of approximately uh, 25 minutes. And, and we'll end the, the session with a Q&A. Q&A part, so, so we prepare to uh, post some uh, good questions for, for Heli in the end. Uh, but to begin with the warm up, so, so circular economy uh, might be a hazy term. It, it has many uh, definitions and, and it's not probably that clear for everyone. So, so I'd like to ask first you, our audience, what kind of um conceptions what kind of perceptions and ideas does the term circular economy provoke in you and the aim here is to uh build a big uh a keyword cloud so so we could start by going into uh, menti.com which which is the tool we're going to use so if you could you now all click into www.menti.com and maybe we'll get the Menti on the display as well. All right, so go to menti.com and then we have an access code there, which is today. I think it's going to be displayed on the chat. Okay, so, so use the code uh, 44833 four five so you'll find the uh, code in the chat now so if you go to the zoom chat there is both the uh, address and the and the code so the idea is that you can drop there any any keywords any sentences it can be opinions uh, or even 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 questions so what what comes to your mind and you'll find the URL, URL, URL uh, address and the code in the in the chat. And meanwhile, we wait for you to go to Menti. Uh, Heli, could you prob probably uh, introduce yourself shortly here while we wait? Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Tuli. And uh... Uh, it's really nice to be here uh, with a uh, few morning talks and uh, talk about circular economy. Just to uh, introduce myself, uh, I have been uh, working in TESI for uh, more than 12 years and I'm working as an investment director in the uh, venture capital uh, uh, direct investments. And additionally, uh, I have uh, uh, other uh, roles as well. So basically we've started in, uh, with our latest strategy, we started a large development project, which is to implement uh, responsible and, uh, and uh, sustainable and basically impact investing uh, uh, approaches to our investment uh, uh, process. So I'm uh, heading that uh, project. It's very uh, actually a very large project and it's uh, shaping our uh, whole in investment process. And uh, additionally, I'm also uh, 
uh, heading the circular economy uh, uh, investment uh, program. So we have a small internal steering group and I'm a member in the group and we are thinking of how to, how to implement this program. So these are basically my uh, three roles uh, at TESI right now. So maybe now we have no, now we see that we have uh, already interesting uh, answers here. I turn to yes. Uli here now. Yes, thank you, Heli. So, all right. Okay, well, there comes more. And if we go this through, okay, there's no waste. That's, that's kind of clear. Uh, waste, uh, wood, there is uh, reuse of new resources plastic, waste, rethinking systems thinking, oh, they, they go fast, <laughs> solar energy, reduce cradle to grave, expensive, rethinking value, refurbishing, good, healthy and balanced earth, I guess, uh, zero waste production, design, reusing, uh, interconnectedness, and efficient resource system. What do you think, Heli, uh, about these words? I think they're all, they, they uh, picture well the uh, complexity or, or, or multifacetedness of the term. Yeah, exactly. There are so many different angles to circular economy. It's kind of reflecting that it's actually, I think, a philosophy, uh, a philosophy to think about uh, business and to think about consumption and to think yeah. about design and production. Right, so it's not a specific sector or we're not talking in that sense, but it's more, more like, uh, a philosophy. Great. I think this uh, works as a great bridge to our, our topic then. So, so as we know, uh, impact investing is obviously a growing trend and, and circular economy is one way to pursue uh, both good uh, business and positive impact. And, and now if we go to actual discussion part, um, Heli, for you, uh, you work as an investment director, as you told, uh, with two circular economy businesses in your portfolio, right? So they're uh, Swapi and, and Zen Robotics. Uh, could you tell more uh, why Desi is investing in, in circular economy businesses? Okay, yeah, we launched, I think it was in 2018 or 19, uh, the circular economy investment program. And of course the aim was to uh, to promote circular economy. And uh, in addition to that, of course, uh, uh, to help uh, the companies to grow and in internationalize, which is our basic role. Uh, also part of TESI's basic role is to develop the uh, uh, private equity or venture capital market. So part of the program is uh, focused on uh, creating uh, new funds or investing in new funds that would uh, invest in, in the Finnish circular economy companies. So uh, basically we decided to allocate like 75 million euros uh, into uh, this program and of which 50 million is directed to uh, company uh, investments and 25 million is to fund investments. And uh, we aim to create a portfolio of 10 companies and uh, want to uh, uh, target funds. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this was kind of coming from the uh, cooperation that we have had with Citra, which has been uh, doing a lot of great work in promoting circular economy and circular economy thinking and uh, kind of creating the knowledge and uh, uh, awareness in, in Finland. So we just wanted to uh, bring a financing tool uh, uh, alongside of uh, that great work. And uh, of, of course, we also wish, because TESI is a syndicating investor, so we uh, wish to syndicate investments and uh, try to create uh, maybe two or fourfold uh, amount of uh, investments in this sector uh, relative to our own uh, in investments. So that kind of, that is a goal to kind of syndicate and 
bring more, uh, more investments to the field. We also wanted to uh, pilot uh, kind of impact uh, thinking or impact uh, investment models or uh, goals and uh, measuring uh, the impact. So basically to all of these companies, we try to uh, kind of uh, put an uh, impact uh, uh, mm. measure or KPI, mm. so which we will mm. follow them. And this is an interesting trial as well. Perfect, thanks. Uh, and, and about impact investing, circular economy is obviously uh, uh, tied to it uh, closely. So, so uh, if we zoom out a bit, how would you uh, crystallize the difference between responsible investing and in impact investing? Since? Well, yeah, well, that, this is something that we have been uh, thinking recently uh, quite a lot in TESI because we've had this uh, development uh, process now, development process. So uh, basically, uh, I think responsible investing is uh, typically seen as a traditional uh, way of uh, uh, kind of uh, trying to uh, mitigate the ESG risks mm -hmm. and kind of uh, protect the uh, value of the in investments uh, that might be kind of eroded if these risks materialize. So basically, it's more like what you call a fiduciary duty. And uh, it's kind of like following regulations and uh, of course, it's pretty much focused on the footprint of the company. So uh, basically the uh, impact of the operations of the, of the company itself. So like uh, production or uh, the uh, supply chain or uh, impacts on uh, the managing personnel. And, uh, and uh, so basically it's these responsible uh, ways of acting and running and conducting the business. And uh, if you look at the uh, kind of the impact investing, then it's uh, basically uh, uh, seen as, as something where you uh, kind of uh, aim at creating solutions to specific uh, problems. So it's more like focused on the handprint of the company, the kind of the solutions uh, that you are bringing with the products or services uh, to the market and to solve some uh, specific issues like for instance, related to uh, social inequality or uh, climate change or, or environmental issues. So basically you want to have uh, uh, measurable uh, results uh, when you are looking at the impact investing. And typically then you have also these other indicators that are attached to your investments that you want to follow and, and see that the impact is created. Right. Yeah. Um, great. So. Um, Okay, then uh, circular economy means uh, more or less uh, keeping resources in circulation instead of the take make waste uh, model and creating added value without with less or without material uh, raw material use and and uh, this can happen through different business models, uh, for instance, product as a service model, uh, product life extension, sharing platforms or, or resource efficiency. Uh, if you think of your portfolio companies, so so Swappy and Zen Robotics, uh, could you tell about their business models? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, actually, we have five investments from the from the circular economy program. Uh, uh, Swappy is uh, a company that is uh, focused on refurbishing uh, uh, smartphones. Uh, so basically, it's uh, refurbishing iPhones, and and uh, mm -hmm. it. Uh, it buys the uh, used phones, uh, typically, I think, from uh, B2B sellers. And then it bas basically it has a uh, production to uh, refurbish the uh, phones so that they are basically packaged and uh, uh, like new uh, when they are resold over the internet. And this has been uh, really successful. The company has been growing really, really fast. And uh, we are also looking uh, looking at this year the way to over double the uh, turnover so it's it's really and it's expanding in uh, several markets like uh, Sweden and uh, Germany and Italy and Denmark and, and we have a lot of uh, uh, new markets that we are looking at and entering into those so uh, uh, I think that's a very the impact it comes from uh, when you are prolonging uh, the uh, life cycle of the product or and so the increase the usage of that and that it has uh, impact on the uh, of course the co2 emissions and uh, and you have kind of less uh, 
production and less uh, material waste and such. So Zen Robotics is uh, it's a different kind of company. It's more like focused on uh, uh, actually uh, producing and uh, selling um, robots or automated sorting lines for uh, uh, waste recycling. So uh, actually it's it's based on the machine vision and it uh, has different kinds of automated uh, pickers that pick and sort waste. And it's used at the end of the uh, sorting line. So basically you have uh, before uh, these uh, automated robots, you have uh, uh, different ways to sort, uh, sort waste, waste. And uh, it's actually replacing in many, many places like uh, dangerous and dirty work uh, at the end of the line. So, and it increases uh, uh, kind of the, uh, uh, the material withdrawal or, or re the reusage of materials. So, and it has two um, uh, products currently. So one is uh, focused more on uh, uh, larger waste like uh, construction waste and uh, like metals and rocks and uh, wood. And then there is another uh, product line which is more uh, focused on uh, like typical uh, consumer waste like uh, sorting uh, recyclable plastics and such. And uh, basically the business model is uh, uh, sim simple in itself because basically they are selling, uh, selling these uh, robotic lines. And uh, of course the additional uh, benefit is that you have better information about the quality of the recyclable waste because that is important when you are reusing the material so you have to know what, what, what is the quality, quality of the it's not actually waste anymore because it's a raw material so it's, you have to know what's the quality of the raw material that you're using so these are these two companies and if you want to know I have others as well <laughs> so in the program okay okay let's see if we have time in the end maybe we can open open those up as well. So maybe these were a uh, bit more kind of traditional circular economy businesses in the sense that uh, life cycle uh, uh, extension and, and waste uh, management or raw material, actually, as you said. So um, the next question, what kind of advantages do circular businesses have in contrast to traditional businesses today? What do you think? Uh, well, I think uh, it's, uh, it's kind of very uh, hot area right now, a very interesting area. And uh, it's uh, seen very promising and uh, of course very needed and necessary to uh, kind of support the uh, transition to more sustainable uh, uh, businesses and sustainable economies. So in the sense of usage of uh, nature resources and uh, uh, kind of mitigating the climate, uh, climate uh, uh, change risks. So basically you have, uh, I think one of the uh, advantages is that you have a better maybe a stakeholder image or brand image when you are working in, uh, in, in a business where you create uh, something good and benefit for the society in addition to your business. Uh, of course, uh, you have a better uh, employee uh, image and uh, maybe attractiveness. So a lot of, especially I think the young people uh, uh, like to work uh, in a company that uh, also has some other purpose and, uh, and benefits uh, and not just making money, but to create more good for the society. And of course, right now you have availability of the public and EU uh, funding programs uh, because there is a lot of uh, a lot of EU money and public money diverted to or directed to this uh, area and of course there is a lot of I think uh, larger industrial uh, players who are also looking uh, at this development and uh, they have uh, or, or they have a lot of interest in these areas so it might, might be uh, uh, easy to find strategic partners or uh, find interest from these industrial players so at least these uh, come to mind. Right yeah yeah and that's definitely you have a real real uh, good problem when you when you do circular business. Uh, how would you estimate the current share of, of circular economy startups in Finland? So is there uh, enough circular economy startups to invest in? 
Yeah, this is a very good question because like like we already noticed in the beginning, like circular economy, it's it's not an uh, industry in itself. Mm-hmm. Or, so it's very difficult to get an understanding of, uh, of where we are because basically it's a philosophy and it's... Uh, uh, it should be a, a transition which which actually would uh, end up in a situation where we no longer talk about circular economy because it's everywhere and, and it's a normal way of working. But right now, because we are in the transition, uh, we, are, we are kind of want to see where we are going. And we have, uh, in Tesi, we have uh, done this exercise that we uh, picked, uh, handpicked actually, like uh, more than uh, 500 companies. It's been done together with Business Finland and with BTT and uh, with Citra. And we try to identify uh, companies that are uh, working on a circular economy or uh, developing circular economy business models. And uh, when you look at these, uh, we have this data model, uh, which we have developed and we are combining business data and uh, then we are combining funding data to this model, but it's still a bit of work in progress. So this is, of course, uh, kind of more indicative mm-hmm. understanding that we have, but we found like a total of um, uh, 370 uh, SME companies mm-hmm. and we have um, tagged uh, these uh, circular economy categories for this. So we have like uh, renewable energy and uh, recycled and renewable materials and sharing platforms and product as a service. And product life extension is one category, recovery and recycling and energy and resource efficiency. And uh, I think we have uh, pretty well uh, uh, companies that are uh, kind of focused on the recovery and recycling and energy and resource efficiency. A lot of these companies are still quite small, of course, because they may be quite young as well. So the medium-sized companies are a bit less than 100 in this group of companies. And uh, then there are some areas which still seem to be uh, rather new as well. And we don't find so many companies that would be like this sharing platforms and product as a service and these product life uh, extension uh, areas of of this business. And uh, and I think uh, the market looks pretty good because uh, when we look at the funding data, which actually we don't have quite a reason, but it's from uh, like, uh, I think the most recent numbers are from 18. So the past like three years from there, I think there's been like 100 million venture capital funding uh, to these uh, companies, and there's roughly 40 companies every year that uh, receive venture capital investments in circular economy. So it looks pretty good, uh, but uh, especially I think the venture capitalists are interested uh, in this uh, sharing platforms and product as a service mm-hmm. and product life extension, probably because they are uh, a bit less uh, capital intensive uh, business models. Yeah, and I think there are quite many uh, companies, quite many opportunities, though, and uh, and uh, I think the market looks pretty active, so it's good. But of course, you can always uh, an investor says that you can always have mm-hmm. more. You should have more. <laughs> was I it have a bit? Yes, just one you. interesting data point. I just noticed that uh, Business Finland has had this uh, application process for uh, uh, circular economy investment grant. And they have received like 164 applications, and uh, they they has been applied like uh, 284 million of, of funding. So I think there is a lot of activity in this uh, area, which is of course good. Perfect. Did you say that the uh, number of of, of uh, SMEs was 317 or 70? Sorry, 70. Just, <laughs> 70. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That's that's maybe. It, yeah, it sounds. Yeah, uh, but but of course, this I have to say that this is uh, this data has been developed by you know hand picking and identifying and right. going through a lot of lists. Like we, I think we went through uh, more than a thousand companies and uh, sorting them. And uh, so it, it is uh, an indicative list because there is no uh, automated way of picking these companies because it's right. uh, it's not an industry. You don't grab them with a code or something. So you have to just uh, search for them. Right, right, exactly. All right. And then if we uh, again zoom out uh, to a more like international level and, and level of uh, regulation, 
uh, as you said, there are several uh, policy initiatives and frameworks uh, going on to shape the economy to better support the, the climate targets and, and, and finally to reach climate neutrality. And one of these is the EU Sustainable Finance Program as part of the European Green Deal. Uh, could you tell more what is actually happening at the moment in the financial markets in, in EU and, and how, how will these uh, uh, programs uh, affect startup investing in the near future? Well, I think uh, the sustainable finance, it's one of these uh, four pillars of uh, EU sustainability policy. And uh, I think the goal is for EU to, uh, to direct, um, like I think they estimate, like there is a need for 260 uh, billion annual uh, additional investments to reach the uh, climate uh, uh, goals in 2030. So there is a lot of uh, money that is needed to uh, uh, finance this transformation. And uh, uh, the policy program has basically uh, three uh, main goals. One of them, of course, is to direct uh, capitals uh, to these uh, sustainable investments. Uh, another is to incorporate uh, the sustainability into the uh, risk management approach uh, and then uh, to promote uh, transparency and kind of a long term uh, approach to investing. And they have, um, they have developed this EU taxonomy, which uh, mm -hmm. defines uh, uh, then six uh, uh, environmental targets, and uh, they have also uh, develop this uh, sustainable financing uh, disclosure regulation, which will affect a lot of uh, investors. So that, that's promoting the uh, transparency of how investors approach uh, the ESG and sustainability issues. So uh, the investors uh, have to pub uh, public this, uh, or pub publicize this information on their website and in their marketing materials and in their annual reporting. Uh, in the future to create transparency, how they are working on this. And uh, this taxonomy defines like uh, these two categories of investments uh, or, or basically three categories. So one is uh, the one that is uh, not uh, kind of uh, applying this uh, taxonomy and I have to uh, announce that. Uh, but you still have to tell about this, how you're uh, handling sustainability risks. But then you have uh, uh, investments that are promoting uh, uh, the sustainability. And then there you have a, a really green category, which are investments that are uh, complying with the uh, technical expert group taxonomy, which is, uh, which is defining in detail uh, with which kind of in investments you, you should uh, uh, consider that are uh, in this very, very green group. And I think probably many people already know the six environmental objectives. Uh, one is climate change mitigation. Uh, then there is climate change adaptation. Then su sustainable use and production, uh, protection of water use and marine resources. Uh, then there is a circular economy uh, and waste prevention and recycling and pollution prevention and control, and then healthy ecosystem like the bio, biological uh, diversity and uh, protection of ecosystems. And, uh, and then uh, the, uh, the idea is uh, such that uh, a sub, uh, sustainable investment have to uh, substantially contribute to at least one of these. So for instance, in circular economy, and it must not do any harm to any of the other environmental objectives. Mm. And then you have to still apply the minimum uh, social safeguards. So, so this is a taxonomy and there is a lot of regulation coming and there's a, a need to create transparency and the EU wants the companies also start to uh, uh, report, uh, report on their activities and uh, to have this uh, risk assessments as well. And they are currently, I think two weeks ago, they announced uh, this um, uh, new uh, corporate sustainability reporting directive that they are working on. And that's, uh, that's defining how they want corporates to report on sustainability in the future. So uh, this, a lot of things happening and this of course will uh, uh, direct the LP's interest into uh, the sustainable investments and uh, and also the funds will be asking uh, mm. more information on this. 
Mm. Mm. Yep, and that's the that's the key. Um, so, in future, as these uh, policy processes go 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 forward, um, how are how do you think circular economy businesses are positioned towards these changes in the regulation level? I think uh, I think circular economy is quite well positioned uh, in the sense, at least, that it's uh, it's one of the uh, uh, six environmental uh, objectives of this uh, in itself, and I think additionally also it uh, in in many cases it, it, it has a contribution to some of the other areas, like for instance uh, pollution prevention or uh, like uh, protection of. Uh, water resources or so it has these additional benefits or, or climate change and mitigation benefits. So I think uh, circular economy companies are quite well uh, uh, positioned and uh, indeed uh, the taxonomy uh, defines in article like uh, 13 uh, what what is considered uh, as a circular economy and uh, waste recycling uh, issues. So there is a lot of things uh, that, that have been listed uh, there so uh, i think it's extremely well positioned actually perfect perfect and actually actually the taxonomy was was launched if i remember correct in in march this year so it's still quite uh, uh new new and current topic it, well, yeah well actually yeah uh, the report i think that yeah, I don't actually recall. Maybe it was in March, but um, it's been, of course, in the in the discussions already for a long time. Yeah. And uh, these uh, these uh, disclosure regulations have now been implemented in the beginning of March, uh, and uh, they are kind of increasing uh, at end of this year and next year. And I think the uh, corporate uh, sustainability reporting directive is meant to be uh, applied from uh, the beginning of the 23. I think. So in the coming years, there is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of need for uh, reporting and uh, kind of giving more light on these issues. Exactly. Okay. Uh, now I'm really convinced uh, about uh, circular economy. Now, if I were a business angel willing to increase circularity in my own portfolio, uh, where would you think I should pay attention to? Well, of course, you first. Uh, if I, I'd be an uh, angel investor or any investor, I would look at the current portfolio uh, companies. So uh, is the board work uh, taking these issues into consideration? Is it, uh, do we think in, in business strategies and in, when we are thinking our business model, uh, are we look at these opportunities and are we looking at these uh, risks maybe coming from, uh, if maybe not uh, taking this uh, new philosophy or implementing this new philosophy, I would say. So uh, I think we should look at the product design and development and uh, kind of like design for recyclability. What can we do uh, relating to our current uh, products and uh, materials planning and sourcing and maybe life cycle management or can we change our business model from maybe selling to renting and so forth. So uh, first thing I would uh, look at the current portfolio, of course, and uh, then of course, as an investor, of course, you want to also look at the new investments. And uh, uh, then, uh, of course, it's important, like in any investment, to look at the uh, scalability and fundability of that business, because uh, some, some might be easier and some might be harder. Uh, are there any market entry barriers, of course, or do you need it? Or, or is there existing uh, strategic partners or industry partnerships? Because in many... Uh, cases in circular economy like it was uh, I think uh, in the in the mentee that you need to have a systems uh, thinking and it's a part of uh, uh, an ecosystem and so you have to uh, also look at the business model from that perspective that how easy is it to build a position in, in that uh, value chain and can you create a position that is really valuable in the value value chain so I think these would be uh, things. And of course, there are some uh, businesses that are quite uh, capital intensive can be, in, in the, especially in the materials business. And then there are other business models that are maybe less materially intensive, um, sorry, capital intensive. So uh, that might be better for an angel investor uh, to invest in. So if you don't need like a tens or hundreds of millions of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, great, that makes 
Uh, that makes sense. Uh, then could you come up with any examples of, of companies that, that are not based in circular economy, but has then implemented circular economy business models uh, successfully? Well, I guess uh, it's very easy to think of some of the well-known brands, like, for instance, the uh, Neste, which has uh, uh, created this uh, very successful uh, business transformation from this bio-based uh, diesel that's used from uh, waste uh, waste uh, oils and uh, bio or organic oils. So I think that's very easy to think. Uh, then, of course, there are some even household brands, very well-known names in Finland, like uh, like Sinituote or Fiskars that have started using recycled uh, plastics in their products. And, uh, and then, of course, well-known cases, uh, I think Finlayson, which is the te- uh, household textile uh, company that are kind of uh, uh, taking back their uh, linen and, and kind of reproducing material from that. And I think uh, one of the interests of these household brands is to uh, create the brand image and protect the brand image and uh, kind of attach the, the positive uh, sustainability to their, to their brand. So uh, at least these are very easily <laughs> thinkable, you know, well-known brands. Yeah, those are great examples. Um, well, then, um, do you have any, any tips for a company currently not utilizing circular economy business models to, to begin developing uh, those? Well, I think, it's, yeah, I would refer to Citra that because they have quite good material. So it's easy, for instance, if you want to just look, uh, like uh, download the Citra uh, Circular Economy Playbook, and then you, it's a very good material to kind of open up the thinking and the opportunities that you might have. And then you just have to start rethinking your product and business model and partnerships and your position in the value chain and the whole strategy. But uh, that's a very good uh, source. And of course, they have these uh, case examples of this, uh, the most interesting companies of circular mm-hmm. economy. So you can have some ideas as well. Right. And that's that's a perfect answer because it also answers my next question. That was uh, uh, where to where to begin with and, and where to start looking for more material. But as you said, so, so Citra's uh, Circular Economy Playbook is a good start. Good okay, I think... I think we're good with my questions now and we could move on to Menti again for the Q&A session. Thank you, Heli, for, for this part now. Yeah, thank you so much. And if we go to Menti again, you can already click uh, menti.com and then uh, use the code now displayed on the, on the, on the header of the, on the, of the display of, of the screen. So 4448 three, three, four, five. And what kind of questions do you, did this uh, session raise from you? So now it's, it's time for questions. And maybe mean, meanwhile we wait. Uh, Heli, what do you think? What is the most interesting circular economy startup at the moment in Finland? Could, <laughs> Can you come up with one? I maybe have to say that it's swappy. <laughs> okay, okay, but you're you're a bit biased. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm biased. For me, it's swappy. <laughs> but but it is interesting case, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, I think. There should be some questions soon on the screen. Am I right? Yes, okay. So there's there's one question. Will moving toward a circular economy require changes in consumer behavior? And are those happening already? Yes, I think definitely it will uh, require uh, changes and uh, and in many ways they are happening. I think especially uh, you can see that in the in the popularity of uh, some of these uh, more like sharing uh, platform type of uh, services, like uh, the, maybe the very uh, easy to think of is uh, like this bike rentals or these uh, 
I don't know what you call them, this kind of small, uh, I don't know what they are in English, actually, scooter and rentals and, uh, and right. such, uh, as, w- as well as uh, the swappy case. It means that, uh, yeah, people are uh, more interested in uh, uh, recycled products and uh, it has uh, become uh, more in a valuable, valuable in a way that, uh, that actually not to buy new and mm. to kind of use uh, uh, products for a longer time. So I think it's uh, the culture is changing and people see the need of it. Definitely, definitely. There are more and more sharing platforms so of yeah. all kinds of for all kinds of uh, consumer uh, products. Products. I think also the many of the uh, while we're waiting for another question. Yeah. <laughs> many of yeah. the large uh, textile uh, brands are actually very much looking into uh, uh, how to add more uh, recycled uh, fibers into their uh, products because it, that is a very huge is- issue like everyone knows and there in that area there are some other interesting circular economy startups in Finland but uh, of mm. course business models are much harder to mm. scale up and uh, get more capital intensive but uh, right. but I think that's a very very large area uh, yeah. and of course there are some uh, food waste uh, uh, companies as well and that's an important area as well and people are uh, I think accepting these uh, models and uh, seeing them as a, as a clever way to act and behave indeed indeed yeah there's even a restaurant for uh, waste yeah food waste <laughs> yeah okay okay so one question oh now there's two um when and where can you implement pilot projects to these different circular strategies? Any good tips? Well, this is very broad, uh, very broad question. So it's uh, uh, when and where. Uh, I I think, like I said, it's a it's a philosophy, and uh, I think basically, basically, you should think of them like anywhere anywhere that you can ha- see these opportunities. And of course, like I just mentioned also, it seems that uh, for instance, Business Finland is uh, providing these grants to help uh, implement in different kinds of pilot projects. Uh, but um, th- this is a very broad question. It's very hard to answer, <laughs> sorry, but I would uh, look for these opportunities everywhere. Yes, and that's also what we kind of covered during the, during the discussion. Uh, then there's a comment, the legislation is perhaps one of the biggest drivers towards circular, but outside that is it, isn't the only real driver saving money in the end of the day. Uh, well, ba- basically, I think uh, there's a lot of questions now coming in, but uh, uh, of, of course, the economic uh, uh, kind of impacts are uh, or financial impacts are important, but I think that's also related to this uh, uh, climate uh, transition and uh, climate uh, change uh, risks and mitigating the risks uh, for the companies. Because uh, I think many of these uh, issues like uh, uh, eventually also have uh, financial uh, impacts on the company. It's maybe not uh, only like saving money, but it's also protecting value and uh, and creating value in a in a more kind of sustainable way because everyone is understanding that this way cannot be sustained that how we are we're acting right now right and there were some questions uh, still but i think we need to move <laughs> on maybe we can have another circular economy <laughs> uh, webinar uh, in, in in the future uh, since this raises uh, questions, thank you, Heli, and and maybe uh, and thank you for the questions. And now maybe we could look the upcoming events uh, before we end the, the session. So perfect, thank you. So um, so next people morning talks will be. In, in June and this time in, in two separate uh, sessions. So they will be both focused on the municipal elections and they will be both uh, panels 
uh, from the perspective of angel investing, of course, and and uh, I really encourage you all to join. And and then we have uh, one related event still coming in in May. So ESG for business angels, which is a training for business angels willing to uh, increase their knowledge in in managing ESG and uh, uh, measuring uh, impact of their portfolio. So those are the upcoming sessions and thank you all for joining today thank you Heli we had a great chat yeah thank you so much and wish you all uh, have a nice day today indeed indeed wish you all have an energetic uh, Thursday thank you